got kicked out, and now my family wants me to move back. I'm a 21-year-old guy. My mom me out on August 26th, and it wasn't a pretty exit. I haven't spoken to her at all since then to give you some background. I've been working full-time since I graduated a few months back. I grew up with just my mom, as a single parent, and I'm her only child. Since I was 11, it's basically been just the two of us at home, with my grandparents dropping by occasionally. I'm no therapist, but I'd say my mom fits the bill for narcissistic personality disorder and has a touch of bipolar disorder too. Convincing her to seek professional help. Good luck with that. Honestly, I can't even fault my dad for leaving. I remember being a kid and just feeling bad for him while she threw stuff around and screamed so loud that the house seemed to shake. Looking back, I kind of wish I had gone with him when they divorced. But back then, he worked overseas and I didn't really know him. Once he was gone, I became the target. I'd often get kicked out just for a night, only to return the next day and find her acting like everything was fine again. If I stayed put, she'd try to bust down whatever door I was behind. At this point, there are hardly any doors left in the house that aren't damaged from her slamming into them. It got physical too, she shoved, hit, and even brandished knives until I finally stood up for myself when I was strong enough. All the while, she'd be screaming that I was a mistake and that I caused her cancer from all the stress I gave her. After I left for college and came back, it all started up again. I tolerated her behavior until one day I just snapped, packed my bags, and left. Now I've cut ties with her, but my relatives keep urging me to move back in with her since she's all alone. Honestly, that's not my issue. I told them they didn't see how she treated me. I said I might consider going back if she ever apologized, but I know that won't happen. For the first time since going to college, I feel lighter. I'm sharing an apartment with some close friends and hanging out with them after work is becoming some of my best memories. My only regret is how this is affecting my grandparents. They look so sad that I left and that their daughter is living by herself. Story 2 My coworker seems like an ordinary person, but he amazes me. Unlike most people I know, he has no mental health issues. He takes no medication and is in good physical shape. I've had to explain things like panic attacks, anxiety, my medications, and feeling overwhelmed by everyday life because he's never dealt with or heard of these problems. Almost everyone else I know struggles in some way. The difference between them, myself, and him is striking. It's as if he's not human. Some other things about him he's always on time for work, never oversleeps, and has no trouble sleeping. He doesn't have emotional outbursts, meltdowns, or periods of shutting down. He has no allergies or food sensitivities that he's aware of. He exercises daily, either at home or the gym. He has no ongoing health problems. He doesn't get stuck, freeze up, or get caught in repetitive thoughts or actions. He drives easily and knows his way around without using his phone. Detours don't bother him. When plans change or fall apart, he simply adjusts and carries on. He can chat casually with anyone, men or women. He makes big decisions without hesitation. He follows through on his commitments, doing what he says he'll do, when and how he says he'll do it. He solves problems on his own, without needing to look things up online. He doesn't keep his phone with him all day. He puts it away and doesn't feel the need to check it. He doesn't use or care about social media. Story 3 I hate my son. I can't bear my child. I loathe my son with all my heart, and I no longer feel bad about it. I know this makes me look like a bad dad, but I don't care anymore. I hate my son. This isn't just annoyance over normal teen rebellion or a big fight. He's 21 now, and I'm sure he's just a terrible person. The trouble started. He bullied others all the time. I can't forget how he broke a classmate's arm on purpose in third grade. The school had to step in, but he didn't feel sorry or say sorry at all. I thought maybe it was just a phase he'd grow out of, but things got worse. As a teen, he began stealing. This wasn't just taking cash from my wallet, but major crimes. Last year, he got into our bank account somehow and drained our savings. Thousands disappeared blown on booze, gambling, and God knows what else. We found out when the bank told us about weird activity. When we confronted him, he just shrugged. He didn't say sorry or try to explain. He didn't even try to deny it. He just doesn't give a damn. He cheats on every girlfriend, then jokes about it like it's funny. He shows no respect to anyone around him. When things don't go his way, he explodes punching holes in walls smashing stuff and once even threatened to strike me.
For years, I've walked on eggshells in my own house fearing the next blow up. His presence feels like a gloomy, poisonous fog that sucks the life out of everyone. We've given everything a shot therapy, family get together, strict methods, softer approaches, you get the idea. Not a single thing has made a difference. I'm worn out at this point. He's like a stranger to me now, and to be frank, I don't want him near me. It sounds awful, but it's the truth I want to cut all ties with him. I'm just over it, and I don't feel bad about it, not anymore. You can't force help on someone who won't accept it. TL doctor my 21-year-old son manipulates acts and lacks empathy. He has stolen from us, emptied our savings, and shows no remorse for any of it. I feel exhausted, and I don't want him in my life anymore. I don't feel guilty about this decision. Update I've made up my mind to kick him out and have a frank talk about what his actions mean. It's time for him to face the real world. Second update. I've asked my son to leave at last and told the authorities about what he did. It hurts too much to go into the details. I'm feeling both relieved and confused. A weight has lifted off my shoulders, but this whole thing has left me spent. I never thought I'd end up in a situation like this. I'm thankful for all the advice people gave me. It helped me find the guts to do something even though I don't know what's coming next. Right now, I'm just taking things as they come, one day at a time. 